I want to share something that stuck with me. It's from this guy, Hillier Smith. He's a pretty well-known YouTube editor, but what he said really applies to DJing as well. He said, if you do all your video editing at a 10, really fast cuts, fast paced stuff, it actually stops being a 10. You need periods of lower energy so that the audience can actually recognize when you turn it up. This allows it to deliver its intended impact at the right moment. Think of music energy like a roller coaster. When the energy is high all the time, it's like being on the main drop for a whole hour. It can be exhilarating at first, but over time it becomes exhausting and loses all its impact. On the other hand, when the energy is varied, it keeps the ride interesting and exciting. There are ups and downs, twists and turns, and the audience never knows what to expect. The high points feel even more thrilling because they're contrasted with lower energy moments. Of course, when we talk about music energy, we aren't only talking about getting the crowd hyped. It can actually stir all kinds of other emotions that DJs can tap into. With the right tracks and energy level, you can influence things like happiness, empathy, even memories. So how do you know what kind of energy you need to create? If you're playing in a club, one way you can do this is to understand your purpose in the lineup. For example, a warm-up DJ generally shouldn't play anything that's higher energy than the headliner would play. I know I've been to plenty of events where the warm-up DJ has been absolutely rinsing it out, where people are just trickling in and getting their night started. It's completely the wrong vibe. Let me explain this chart. On the left here we've got energy going from low to high, and then along the bottom we've got time, which represents the time of your set. If you're the opening DJ, generally speaking you want to start a relatively low energy level and slowly bring it up over the course of your set. Not too high though, remember you're not the headliner and the night's only just getting started. One of the trickier moments to deal with is when you're taking over from another DJ. There are two main situations you can encounter. This one I call the walk. This red line here represents the previous DJ who's kept the energy level pretty high. They perhaps rinsed a bit too hard for their opening set, and you want to take over for them, but what you don't want to do is kill all the energy they created on the dance floor. It's a good idea to try and maintain that energy level at least for a little bit, before lowering it to a more appropriate level. Towards the end of your set, try and raise the energy level up a little bit more before you hand over to the next DJ. The second situation is if the crowd is half asleep when you jump on the decks. There's two approaches you can take here. If the DJ before you has been keeping that energy level pretty low, you want to start at a similar energy level and then slowly raise it up over the course of your set, very similar to the opener. The second approach I call the water balloon. This one can be a little bit more risky, but it can work really well. If it's quite late on in the night and the DJ before you's not quite got the energy level up enough, what you can do is instantly switch it up with your first track. This signals to the crowd that it's time to wake up and get partying. You start your set at a much higher energy level before cooling things off a little bit during the set. Remember, you're still not the headliner, so you don't want to be at max energy by the time you hand over. If you still aren't sure what to do, try talking to the promoters before your set. The chances are they know what kind of crowd to expect and what they respond to. They can also give you some insider info on the other DJs on the lineup, which can be really helpful. You can get familiar with them and the kind of music and vibe that they play. Of course, these templates are just guides, and over time you'll learn to adapt naturally to the situation you're in. DJing is an art, not a science. One way to get better at this art is to become an active observer. If you can, make sure you leave a bit of time before you're set to go into the club, observe the crowd and the DJ. What direction is the music heading and how are the crowd responding to it? There are four high level elements I use when planning my set structures. They've really worked for me in the past and hopefully they will for you too. Think of them a bit like building blocks for your sets. You can use as few or as many of them as you like. This segment I call the maintenance phase. It's basically where you found an energy level that seems to be working. It doesn't matter if you're coming from a high, medium or low energy place. The goal is just to keep the energy level the same. This segment I call a riser. All you're doing is moving from a lower energy state to a higher one. This segment can actually last an entire set, in which case it's pretty similar to the opener that we looked at earlier. The next segment I like to use is a cool down phase. This is simply moving from a higher energy place to a slightly lower one. If you've been rinsing hard, this can be as easy as just letting a breakdown play. From here, once the crowd's caught their breath, you can either raise the energy back up, try and maintain it, or keep them on a cool down, depending what your goal is. This segment is probably the most fun one to use, but use it sparingly. I call it the shock and awe, and it's basically moving from a low energy state straight to a high energy state. The key here is surprising the crowd and getting that sweet, sweet dopamine out of their brains. If you've ever seen people suddenly hitting the dance floor, this is probably what the DJ is doing. It's more effective when you use it from a low energy state, but it can also work if you're in the medium level. Of course, no DJs are standing behind their decks drawing little graphs. Over time, you'll learn to do it intuitively, and your energy graphs will actually react to the crowd. So how do you actually control the energy in your sets? The two big ways are transitions and track selection. Let's look at transitions first, and I'll give you a few ideas how you can use to raise the energy up, lower it down, or keep it the same. One of the first transitions most DJs learn is to mix an outro with an intro. Before you fall asleep on me, it's actually a really good way for a maintenance phase of a set. That is where you want to keep the energy the same as it was previously. 
Because the transitions tend to be longer, it means the crowd has less of a surprise when the new tune drops. It can be really effective on more melodic kinds of music like trance, because the tracks slowly layer on top of each other, which takes the crowd on a bit of a journey. Although cuts might seem like a bit of a cop-out mixing-wise, they're actually one of the most powerful tools for controlling energy in your sets. Surprising people with something musically is one of the quickest triggers for dopamine in people's brains. That's the pleasure chemical. But you don't only have to use cuts for bringing up the energy. They're also really helpful for when you've been rinsing out bangers and you want to quickly cool the crowd down. Sometimes I use them to quickly enter a breakdown after a period of hardcore rinsing. Another trick that can be really handy is using loops and acapellas. Sometimes all it takes is a well-known sample or vocal to raise the energy on an otherwise boring track. You can turn a low or medium energy track into a high energy track simply by giving the crowd something to latch onto. The tracks you actually play are going to have a big impact on the kind of energy you're creating. You might think just sticking to a similar BPM and genre is going to make maintain a pretty similar energy level in your set. But that would be a mistake. Energy level is one of the first tags I add when I put new music into my library. This really helps me control my sets on the fly without having to overly plan them in advance. If you haven't got your tracks tagged by energy level, I highly recommend that you do so. If you aren't sure how to do that, I've got a full video which I'll link to in the description. There's one other part to this equation, and that's you. More accurately, your stage presence and how you interact with the crowd. The layout and size of the club can impact how important this is. If you're in a smaller club, the crowd is going to be much more in your face and your energy level is going to have a bigger impact on them versus a festival where you might just be a tiny dot on the horizon. But generally speaking, if you look bored, that's going to filter down to the crowd. Conversely, if you're obviously having a good time behind the decks, that energy is going to be transmitted to the crowd like some sort of infectious disease. There's a lot to unpick here around a DJ's role as a performer. Too much for this video, but don't underestimate the impact that you can have on the energy level of your sets. If you're struggling with this, one tip I have is to record and listen back to your own sets. As you listen to it, try and map your own energy graph. You might be surprised at how the energy in your set ebbed and flowed. Of course, we're only just scratching the surface of what can be done here. If you use Rekordbox, there's actually a ton of features built right in that can help you control the energy of your set, but they aren't easy to find. So if you enjoyed this video, check this one out next where I I share five record box features that you may not know about.